I remember a few years ago, he said he got this job writing on the show. And he was like, yeah, you know, and there was no effort. And it was so easy. And I just, um, you know, I didn't have to chase it down. And my mind was kind of hurting. So like, what, what do you mean? What? Brooks, before you moved to Hollywood, what was the picture you had in your mind of what it meant to be a working Hollywood screenwriter? That's a great question. Um, uh, if before I went to Hollywood, my thought of being a working screenwriter is um, sort of nonstop, five projects at a time, this one, that one, the other one, and um, you know, finishing one and, and getting on to another one. I mean, I think that's pretty much what I would think back, back then. So when you were at NYU or even before, you had this vision that it would be nonstop work, phone ringing, people wanting to have meetings maybe. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, the idea of made it was, um, it, what's so interesting is that a lot of people talk about, oh, have you made it, have you broke it in or whatever. Um, and it's, it's kind of amorphous when you go, well, what does that mean to you that you made it? And people usually go, screen cybers, I don't really know. So <laughs> that was certainly the case for me. I mean, when I started, um, I was making movies with my friends in high school and um, it was so much fun. And um, I just was like, look, nothing in my life is more fun than this. How can I do this as much as possible? And then I was like, oh, well, I can go to study at NYU Film School. And I went and so, and then at that point, I just, I would have probably, if I was pushed to define making it, I would have thought, yeah, making something that's widely released um, and everybody knows you and you're whatever. And, and my thought was, yeah, you're sort of working constantly. Um, that's probably how I, how I thought about it back then. In terms of the process of the work, did, did you think that it would just be as easy as sitting down and, you know, having a glass of wine or whiskey or whatever and just music in the background and it all pours out? Or did you realize that it would be more painstaking? Uh, that, that's interesting. Um, well, because the way I started um, with my friends, it was there was a social aspect of it. It was like, I wanted to do this with my friends. I liked them and we had this idea to do together and it was fun. So there was a very team oriented start to when I made movies. And then on my own, I would do my own experiments. And then as I got to film school, I learned that expressing my own voice was really powerful and satisfying in a way. So I became pretty good at um, working on other people's projects and supporting them, uh, co-writing, uh, and collaborating in groups and, you know, leading, following and everything in between. Um, so the, um, so the process was sort of intoxicating, engaging, fascinating, and like layered and levels. And so I, um, so yeah, so the, the creativity, the, the creative part of it and the process is always, always came pretty naturally and was deeply engrossing to me. So, it, um, there were things that back then I would consider hard or difficult or whatever um, about the process, but it, the way I approach it now, it, it's never hard. It's, it's always easy. And it's because um, I frame it in a way that makes it easy, whereas back then I didn't know how to do that. So I was generally having fun, but very often going, wow, this is so hard, this is difficult. I was looking at the, 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 what was going on in certain ways without realizing that it was undermining the power of my process. And when did you realize that it was much different than your first visions of what a working, successful Hollywood screenwriter is? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So I, right out of NYU film school when I was 22 years old, I made a, I wrote, directed, and produced a feature. Um, and then we kind of ran out of money <laughs> and it took a couple of years to kind of get edited and, and put out there. And I ended up taking it on this really fun um, uh, college tour because it was a college. It was a movie about my friends on the NYU soccer team and how we were pretty good at playing soccer, but really good at drinking after games. Um, and that's probably a more interesting encapsulation of what it actually was. Um, but like, uh, there were some good aspects of it, but it was really kind of like a, a graduate level student feature. It was kind of, you know, we were up 22. Um, but, I, but I took that film to um, all these different college campuses on this college tour, and I played it for a, for a, for a month. Uh, at the, in New York City at this off-off-Broadway space called New York City's Guerrilla Cinema that we created. And it was a lot of fun. So um, so I was getting a first-hand experience of how uh, challenging it can be to get people 
in the seats. You know, I, I did this movie. People that saw it liked it for what it was. Um, and it was like, well, geez, how do I, how do, how does that work? How do you get people? It's not just I made a movie and everybody shows up. And it's not exactly like you know, it didn't get into Sundance, so I didn't have the you know Kevin Smith experience or Richard Linklater or those guys. Um, uh, so, um, but it was the whole thing was fun. The, the the craziest promotion we did in at that time. We, at one point, even me or my friend that was doing it, because I actually. In addition to screening my movie, we screened my friend's independent feature too. So like mine was Odd Nights, his was Even Nights, and we both did it together. So we were both promoting this, these two independent films together. At one point, we even put like a gorilla suit on around the street. We are doing all sorts of things. And um, so how, uh, so I got a firsthand experience of what it's like to be the business part of it. How do you get people, how difficult is it to tell people about your movie and get them to care about it? And who is going to care about this movie? Because I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking about my own voice and something that felt true to me at the time, you know, for good and for bad. How is that picture of being a working Hollywood screenwriter different now? Well, I think the creative part of it is the same. I'm no more or less creative than I ever was. Um, uh, and my love of it is basically the same, but I'm able to look at the process in a way that's uh, deeper uh, and more fun and easier. Um, and so the quality of my uh, choices that are going to be um, more impactful, they come more often and they come at a greater flow. And when I have the ideas that are just a little bumpy or not quite as strong, I don't get hung up on them. So it's sort of the grace of my efficiency has increased significantly in the way I think about it and the way I allow myself to have more joy more often. So my creative process is profoundly different. Although, like, if you ask me one single question and I had to have a creative answer to that now or when I was 22, it would be kind of the same. But my craft is profoundly different. And how that relates to um, the way I see working writers, you know, and myself, it's, it's, um, my creativity will be, I'll be hired by producers to work on some sort of project. And, um, and then I show up and we're, we, we see it through fruition and it just, and there's sometimes overlapping projects and there's sometimes lulls in between. And then when there's a lull in between, I'm writing my own new spec material. So I'm always writing um, and there's joys of writing my own spec material and there's joys of writing on assignment. Um, you know, I mean, the money part of the assignment for, guaranteed is nice, um, but it's really the deeper joy there for me is I'm working with a team of people and we have to find out a way where I'm loving it and they're loving it. Um, I mean, ultimately they get the final say, but they hire me because they really want my my view, right? You, you know, because um, there's something I did in either a sample or the way I pitched an, an idea to them that they felt like, yeah, this, you know, this guy can really contribute. So, um, so it's that creative flow that I told you about that's fully there when I'm doing spec work um, and it's it's playing well with others in a sandbox. It's really kind of that simple and there's a whole complication to it, but it really is that simple. So, um, uh, and, and I guess the other thing is that there's a piece with the sort of freelance nature of it, the feast and famine, the busy and then the flow. And, then, and the, the paradox is the more relaxed you are about when projects come, when doors close, and how you respond to them, um, the easier things happen. Um, and, and the times in my career when I was like, eggs, eggs, I gotta make it happen, I was inadvertently pushing it away. You know, it's like the um, the cool kid in high school, you know, this person was like, you know, he, you know, all the guys liked him, the girls liked him, and he, was, he wasn't doing anything, he was just kinda like cool, <laughs> you know? And so um, we all have that cool person inside us um, and maybe some of you were that cool. And the funny thing is, if you talk to one of those people, um, they may not may, they might not even have seen themselves as the cool person. But like, um, but there absolutely is that part of all of us that has that sort of charisma, our own authentic charisma. And when we show up with that part of ourselves in a meeting, uh, in the um, the outreach part of the game, um, where we're there's no desperation, we're not boring, we're just um, at ease, and we're ourselves. What ends up happening is we're, um, it's about connecting dots so that we make ourselves the exact dot that we want to be and then the buyer of the script is the exact, they're, they're looking for that dot and then that's how they connect. So um, 
Yeah, I don't know if that, that makes sense. It does, I, and, and I want to talk more about the law of attraction and things later. Um, yeah. and, and you had some great videos on your channel about that as it relates to story. What if things aren't so joyous and you know that in, in terms of staying with a project and playing well in the sandbox, there are going to be times where you're challenged mm -hmm. and maybe you didn't think of that before when you were at NYU because it was all fun and everybody was sort of, you were in this together and, and you could have drinks afterwards or whatever it was. You knew each other well. But now the stakes are different. How do you, how do you view it now? Because things don't always go well in the sandbox. Yeah. So, um, well, my experience at NYU was was awesome and very competitive. Um, at least because I'm a competitive person, so maybe I was bringing that to it. Um, so it was it was lots of fun and it, and it was a great experience. But it was you know there was actually about half the people there were kind of still figuring stuff out, and then the other half were kind of killers and they were they were getting after it. Um, so um, to me, that side of it, th those pressures were were similar. But to your point, that's different. Like, you know, NYU is like, we paid the money, we get the thing, that's it. In the marketplace, it's like we put up or we don't get employed, you know what I mean? So, so there's those pressures um, that are really different. But ultimately, it's, it's the same game. It's like, um, I either have an idea that's gonna contribute to this producer's vision of what they wanna do with the project or don't. And so um, when I show up and have a meeting and share my take on something or, um, or he's, they've already hired me and I do a draft. It's like, I just, I only can do the best that I can do. And then um, they look at it and, and then we go from there. I mean, it's, um, so it's, so yes, the, the doors close um, and oftentimes people will frame that situation of a closed door as um, a challenge or terrible or this or that or the other. And um, I understand that and I have empathy for that. And it's just, um, it's paying attention to the wrong thing and it's actually a self-imposed limitation to kind of even think of it that way. You just say, um, yeah, you, you just count the wins. You know, this is a win, this is a win, this is a win, and then the wins stop at some point. But like, <laughs> um, and it sounds like Pollyanna-ish because it is, and yet um, as I've tried that sort of mindset, it's just, A, it feels better, it's real fun, and it works better because can you, you're shifting into that cool kid in high school. Everything's just, it's just okay. You know, you work it out. It's either this, okay, yeah, this door closed, doesn't matter, there's one behind it. And then, okay, that one closed, fine. Then, then there's one behind it. And the more we focus on that, it really does, the paradox is, the more we're not attached to when the door finally opens, the faster they open. The watch pot never boils, kind of. That's right. <laughs> it absolutely never boils in Hollywood. And you cannot be desperate and you can't be boring. Um, and so, uh, the way to not be desperate and the way to not be boring is, the way to not be boring is being authentic to yourself. And the way to not be desperate is realize that it's okay, it's gonna work out. This, the, the universe is on the job. You do, you do your stuff, I go up, I, I make the best creative choices I can. Um, either I'm specking material, or I'm working with this partner or whatever, and, um, and it's it, it's gonna work out. Did you always think like this? No. <laughs> Not at all. That was the thing. So um, I was always, um, I always loved it, right? And I, I loved it and I was very productive. There's some people that have like a motor and they go and go and go. And that's sort of how my sort of, you know, I made 50 short film experiments before I even got to NYU. And then um, at NYU, a ton more, right? So I was just, I could just go. Um, and um, I would, what most people do, see what's going on out there. And, um, and if things were going well, I would feel good. If things were not going well, if a door closed, I would feel bad, right? So, um, and that is a terrible <laughs> way to live in general um, in the way most people do it in a sense because um, it hooks us into um, the roller coaster and this business is very much um, that sort of cyclical up, down. There's, there's these things happening beyond what we can completely control. So, um, so what I would do is, you know, hustle and get excited and kind of effort my way, this, that. And, you know, I could make things happen and things were good and I would progress. But the progression of my career literally happens so much faster when I'm, I'm focused and I have a goal and I know where I'm going, but I'm not, um, I'm, I'm just not hooked into it. It's going to happen or it's not. This is going to be, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm good with whatever happens. And it's... Um, 
and, and it's a practice. You have to be able to practice that in little ways and in big ways. And as I, in my career, was able to practice that more often, A, my existential experience of life got better. I just felt better about me. And, um, and milestones got crossed just much faster. This milestone, that milestone, it, all, it was easy. No effort, everything's easy. Um, and it's, it's a practice. And so, um, yeah, so back in the day, I didn't know any different, so I didn't, I didn't know to do it that way. And I have a, uh, uh, an accountability partner uh, who's, a, who's a, uh, a professional TV writer, and I remember a few years ago, he said he got this job writing on the show he was like, yeah, you know, and there was no effort, and it was so easy. I just, um, you know, I didn't have to chase it down, and my mind was kind of hurting. So, like, what? What do you mean? What? What's wrong with this? I spent my whole life hustling and making things happen, and he just, I realized that he was in this place where he was a valuing, not hustling, not efforting, letting things be easy, and I didn't realize that was possible. And if it was possible, that it could actually work, and if it could work, it actually felt better. And so in talking to him and then reading a lot and, um, you know, and this is sort of law of attraction stuff and, you know, you know, not getting caught up in some of the woo-woo aspect of those things, um, but really looking at the tangible, more grounded aspects of them and then trying them. And as I tried them, everything got better. I, it felt, felt better. I enjoyed it more. My creative process got um, easier, more powerful, more consistent. My job became, I get up and I'm happy. And, um, and then, oh yeah, what's going on out there and uh, is secondary, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's, again, it's not 100%, I'm not like all rainbows and butterflies, but um, if you talk to people that I work with, um, they'll pretty much say that most of the time I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy and balanced and, and, and it's because I'm in the habit. I'm in the habit of whatever, whatever, um, whatever happens to me out there, I respond in a way that just, um, is aware of the of the sort of the abundance and, and the bigness and the greatness that's there around some of the, the challenges and, and, and you know the pieces of the challenges. Does that make sense? It does. And balance is something that's very important to you. This sort of the scales. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. I, you know. Um, yeah, I would say yeah. Certainly, certainly, flow is the word that comes up for me. That when I'm in a state of flow, um, that's when it's easy. It's effortless. It's just fun, and it's like you get that time warp experience. Or, you played a lot of sports. Did you have to retrain yourself? Because you said before that you were competitive. Is that helpful? Uh, I love that you brought up sports because um, I've been, so I played uh, soccer in college. I was the captain of the NYU team and intensely competitive. Um, and NYU is a division three school. So division one schools are like, they're all about it. And division three schools are students that also play, right? So, but I wanted to study at the film school. So I was there, but I was really competitive too. So um, uh, this idea of how much winning matters and how to um, sort of make sense of winning in the scope of things uh, and, and how to, it, it, it absolutely fascinates me and it completely relates to this whole idea of mindset because again, the same paradox that we talked about with Hollywood is like if you're too desperate for something, you're actually pushing it away. And in sports, if you're too desperate for hitting a free throw shot or something happening in soccer or whatever it is, you can't, you, have, you gotta be loose and you gotta have that flow. It's, this, it's, it's exactly the same thing. And that's actually one of the ways I was able to sort of find value in the law of attraction ideas um, you know, and sort of just, you know, not not pay too much attention to the metaphysical parts of it because they might be true, but if it's metaphysical, I can't really sort of measure it or make sense of it. But I knew damn sure that when I played sports, if my mindset was confident and easy and active and flowing, the, the numbers, my stats were much better than if I was freaked out or if I was worried about outcome. What if we lose? What if I miss? What if... Hollywood doesn't come locking, right? So it's all the what ifs, what ifs. And so um, it absolutely was a direct connection for me to sort of take what I learned as an athlete and then what I, because I've also coached a lot of kids in, in um, sports as well, my own kids, and I even coached a high school soccer team for a season, which was amazing. And um, I love that mindset stuff. It, it just makes a, it makes a big difference, um, certainly in sports, absolutely in entertainment, and really it, it crosses over pretty much anywhere.